It's a really special day for Artemis Racing. It's the beginning of a new chapter, our second campaign, and one we're determined to win. It's great to be doing it here in Stockholm too. You can see what a beautiful city it is, what a maritime city, and reminds us what we're all about, what the history of the cup, the beautiful cup that's behind me, and I think it's giving the whole team a boost and, and charging us for that extra push for two and a half hard years. There it is, the oldest trophy in international sports, the biggest prize in sailing, and arguably one of the toughest trophies to win in any sport. In fact, it's so tough that in 163 years, only four nations have won it, and only one of those was from Europe, which is, I guess, what today is all about. It's how Artemis Racing and Sweden will bring this magnificent trophy uh, back to Europe for its second time and to Scandinavia uh, for the first time. I'm passionate about sailing. I'm passionate about sailing on the race course. I'm passionate about sailing just for pleasure. The last cap was truly revolutionary. In boats flying along at upward of 40 knots, pulling off foiling maneuvers. Fantastic, fun to do, incredible to watch. And so true that we have a whole new world audience for our sport, something that's going to bring us forward for the next 50 years. It left the typical monohull to a great deal of criticism and choice to rules of catamarans. But still, at that moment, no one knew, no one expected flying catamarans, foiling boats. Uh, I'm very proud and uh, very honored to represent uh, KSSS and uh, the Swedish Challenge. From our perspective, uh, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity, both to be uh, involved as a club, uh, but also uh, for uh, the sailing community as a whole in Sweden. So this is a new form of sailing Torbjörn talked about. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. I know I've done it. The foiling maneuvers was a game changer. The foiling boats made them go very fast, but suddenly with foiling maneuvers, we could spin these boats on a sixpence, these huge craft, and keep the racing close the whole way around the course. We saw it in the final. And I think as we go into the next cup, we'll see that kind of tactical, aggressive racing coming from the beginning of the competition till the end. The cup we now see will be the same. We'll build on the experiences. The boats will be somewhat smaller. It's the second generation of this kind of boat. The world knowledge about foiling catamarans has increased. Every team that lines up is going to be competent. They're going to be able to control these beasts and the racing is going to once again become the center point. But essentially we're talking about a similar craft that we all enjoyed last summer. We're talking about boats that have taken our sport into this next century. Able to go in excess of 40 knots. Standardization has come in and some aspects in order to increase the safety and keep cost under control. It has been a cup where mistakes and tragedy came too much into the picture. Uh, it was about a team that came back from the brink and did what most people thought was impossible, to go up on the falls and race. And given these experiences, our people are bonded together by strong culture and a sense of belonging. We have also managed to recruit some of the best talent out there in all areas, in sailing, on the boat, design, engineering. I spent the good part of the last two months of the America's Cup and the preceding two or three months talking to a lot of people inside our sport, inside the other teams, inside our own team. And I was looking for two things. One, that talent. You don't win this sporting trophy, the hardest one in the world, without real skill. As simple as that. The boat has to be the fastest boat and the sailors need to be the most skilled, the most tactical. That's number one. But there's a really important second ingredient and that's personality. And this time around, we will increase 
the Swedish element in the campaign. Not only have we managed to get Fredrik and Max, our gold medalist from London, on board, but we will also organize an internship, a kind of a school in the Artemis team. We expect, when this campaign is over, some 50 young children will have the opportunity to be with the team. We have the talent everywhere. We have the best sailors. And we have a culture. And I dare to say, we have an understanding of where the issues will be, where we need to do, and we are ready. Torbjörn talked about culture, but culture comes from the top. It's no coincidence that Torbjörn's sitting here today in exactly the same clothes as the rest of the team. The passion that he's talked about for sailing and winning has come through all of us. But it's not just winning in any way. It's important to note not everyone from the team is here. I think there's about 20 of us here, and uh, we're a team now of about 40 people. The other guys uh, and girls are back in our base in Alameda and around the world working towards the cup. We're modifying our existing 45-foot foiling boat so we can get out and test some of the new ideas. The technical sport of sailing, the America's Cup is epitomizes, requires genuine collaboration between a multiple of skills, a multiple of talents, design, build, sailing. How do you interact those three skills? Well, it comes from personality. Today, we're really proud to announce three crucial new members. First of all, uh, Rod Davis. This will be his ninth America's Cup, you probably won't like me saying. <laughs> An absolute wealth of experience in the America's Cup, but that's coupled, which people may not realize, with a gold medal sailing and a silver medal sailing in the sailing and the star class. An incredible sailing talent who in his last few years has turned his attention to coaching. And probably the role that most of us know him for more recently is as the head coach of Emirates Team New Zealand. We feel we have a young, incredibly talented group of sailors, a small group at the moment, only seven of us. We're going to need his guidance to help us to stay focused, understand the wider America's Cup game, and to know really when sometimes we just need to buckle down. <laughs> and then I turn to Max Salomon. I competed against Max for a number of years in the star, culminating in their fantastic victory in Weymouth. The final person I'd like to introduce really doesn't require that much um, around these parts. Frederick Luf, the most accomplished um, Swedish sailor of the last generation and a very, very old friend of mine. We welcome you, Freddie, as well. So Rod, Max and Freddie, join a team that are all single-mindedly passionate about bringing the America's Cup to Sweden. There is no reason why we will not be able to compete and win the America's Cup next time. Sailing is an escapism. The feeling for me on the water is it's a sense of freedom. Since I was five years old, I started sailing. Yeah, that's been, it's been my life. You get those moments on the water where you think, this is why I do it. This is exactly why I love sailing. Well, it's my passion in sailing and uh, representing Sweden in the America's Cup. Such a, such a thing, such a dream. This America's Cup catamaran to a classic boat, we are six or seven times faster. That's why it's so exciting. You can work in a, a team and just try and seek that perfection that uh, you know we all strive for on the water. Artemis, as you know, it's the uh, 
goddess of uh, hunting and the protection of nature, so I kind of like that. This is unbelievable. Nathan Outerich and Artemis Racing have done exactly what they need to do. I'm passionate about Artemis Racing is more than just winning. It's about producing a legacy. It's about winning in a certain way. Given uh, the experience and uh, what the team has uh, achieved and gone through, it has uh, we've been built on that. And I, I do feel it's a very strong culture and uh, a belonging to the team, which I feel very proud of. The team is very much the focus, there's no one individual. It seems to be a good atmosphere in the whole team. The most important might be the spirit itself. The spirit of sharing, of trying to have everyone on the same level. The exciting stuff for me was the, the amount of raw talent we had in the design side. Design team, the way to build the best machine, is maybe the most interesting part. We have been able to attract uh, talent in, in the, all the areas, design and sailing. I mean, we've got six Olympic gold medalists. Some of the teams have an Olympic gold medalist. We have six of them. It gives you a lot of confidence knowing that the guys around you have, have been at the top of the sport and won Olympic medals. So that's why that's a mix which is working 24 hours a day between builders, engineers, big brains and big arms and all together that makes it clear. The fans are cheering on shore. It's a full standing ovation for Artemis Racing. They've earned the respect of everybody watching. America's Cup is steeped in history and mystique. Without a doubt, the America's Cup is the ultimate challenge in sports. To win the America's Cup is something very, very special. Yeah, it's gonna be everything. Everyone's here because they are truly passionate about sailing and truly passionate about winning. It would be an awesome thing to bring the American Cup to Sweden, to Scandinavia, back into Europe for a second time. Artemis is a winning team. The way it's done, the spirit uh, and the values, I think, uh, make it a team able to win the American Cup. We've won, you've won, or you've lost. We're in this for one reason, that's the win. I have two questions about venues to Torbjörn, I guess. One is, are there any news about uh, the venues for the next America's Cup? And two, when you win the America's Cup, where will the venue be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think this, the venue is still to be decided, even though the, uh, what we hear that uh, th there has been narrowed. We believe it will be somewhere around the North American continent. And there are two, three places uh, that has been mentioned. Um, the challenger, uh, sorry, the defender is, uh, though he informs us, he doesn't even t doesn't tell us everything. <laughs> we know where he's negotiating, but, uh, but um, we're still waiting for that, which is a bit unusual. Normally you would know it but we expect it to be somewhere in the north, uh, around the North American continent. And the second question, let's talk about it in uh, four years' time. <laughs> but obviously it would be great to bring the cup to Sweden and, uh, and if so, to make uh, defending the cup in Sweden. I think that was the first boat I've ever driven with a wheel. I've driven a motorboat with a wheel and a car, so... I did a bit of training in those, but uh, <laughs> most of my sailing has been on smaller boats with tillers, and uh, thankfully I've done quite a bit of sailing in smaller foiling boats, so I, I had that understanding of what to come, and it was a simple exercise of learning a wheel. Well, obviously they are a lot smaller. You see, this is Loic Perron out there uh, ripping around, and uh, th this is where the sort of the foiling started to become mainstream in our sport. Um, that boat there weighs 30 kilos. Um, carbon fiber engineering and uh, I think I first started selling those boats in 2008 after the first Olympics I went to and like everyone who's ever had a go on it you're hooked instantly they're just the most amazing boat to sail and so now we have this technology moving forward into the America's Cup and now we have real experts proper designers who are out there really trying to make something of it and uh, you know what better opportunity for someone like myself to come from you know, the grassroots of foiling to go and talk to the smartest people in the world about sailing. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy where I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
we had a good understanding on board of what these boats would be capable of and how to speed that process up of getting it there. And by sailing that boat and by watching the other teams, we were able to catch up a lot quicker than we otherwise would have. Sailing in Sweden is, is really coming strong. Um, the, the effect of, of the whole, all, all the nation really could be an effect. But I mean, when we win the cup, I think the impact will be huge, unbelievable. Yeah, this is our second campaign. Uh, we learned lots of lessons from the first, and, and this time is a very, very different beast. It's uh, one that we're taking very seriously, one we're in it with one sole aim, and that is to win. You can see from the talent that we have in all the departments that we mean business. That said, we have a lot of respect for our opposition, for the contest ahead of us, and we're just going to do everything we can to make it a reality. Thank you.